Believe it or not. you got? Did you get the money? Yeah, but I had to tell Sergeant Merton you'd have something special for us. Oh, don't you worry. It's uh, gold. Pure gold. There's a bullion shipment due to cross the moors using the A169 on its way from Southampton to Middlesbrough. The driver's been bribed to make an unscheduled stop at the car park up at Howarth Point. Urgent call the nature, you know. Now, where did you get this information? The driver's an amateur. He blabbed to a woman I know. So when's it going down? Tomorrow morning. Well, hang on, that doesn't leave us much time. No, no, I'm going to need more details. Tomorrow morning, Howarth Point, what more do you need? What, names? Vic Hawking and Len Dowd. Vic Hawking? Well, I take it he'll be armed, then. Have you ever known Vic Orkin not to be? So you're off at the end of the week then, Mr. Blaketon? Yeah. Back to sunny Spain. You'll be fine, Oscar. And at least you won't have to keep signing in when you get back. Yeah. And this is the bar, as you can probably see. Oscar. This is my niece, Susie. Ah, oh, very welcome she is, too. Hi. Susie. So, you come to stay with your Auntie Gina for a while, have you? Yeah. Right, then. I'll show you your room, eh? Follow us, David. Oh, sorry. A bit of a handful, I'll bet. Well, it can't be easy for her, can it? I mean, coming to a place like this... She's used to the bright lights of Manchester. Well, at least she'll be company for Gina whilst you're in. All right. You've made your point. Right, sir? Yes, of course. I'll expect you later, then. Goodbye. It's true. Crosses the moor tomorrow morning. D.I. Shiner wants to bring in Harry. Make sure he isn't holding anything back. It's lovely to have you here. You don't have to pretend, Auntie Gina. What? Well, we both know I'm here as a punishment, so let's just get on with it. It's not punishment. Your mum just wanted to get you away for a while. She's worried about you. Yeah. Did she tell you why? Well, she said you got in with a bad crowd, and with one lad in particular. Jamie. His name's Jamie Laban, and he's not bad. It's just that people don't understand him. Oh, like the bloke he pulled a knife on. It was self-defence. Oh, always carry a knife round, does oh, he? I don't expect you to understand living out here. And anyway, he's being punished. He got six months in Boston. So why's Louise packed you off to me, then? Cos she found out I was visiting him. She went mad. Tears, everything at the thought of me going into that sort of place. Well, I'm not surprised. Look... I know I might seem as old as the hills to you, but I know what it's like at your age. So why don't we try and have some fun while you're here? Fun? There's nothing here except fresh air and clean living, according to Mum. And since when does your Mum know everything? Hey, Have we got a deal, then? Deal, Auntie Gina. There is just one rule, mind. I can't cope with the Auntie B. So it's just Gina from now on, OK? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Thanks, Oscar. Hi, hey, Doctor. How are you settling in? Oh, I'm just about finding my way round now. But I've been thinking I'll never finish unpacking those boxes I've brought with me. I don't even know what's in half of them. I've still got a full box in the attic and I've been here years. <laughs> I think once I've finished unpacking, the place will seem less strange. It just doesn't feel like it's mine yet. No. <laughs> what you need is to stamp your personality on the place, Dr Merrick. Well, I've hung up my pictures, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. No, oh, you need to redecorate. I couldn't help noticing that waiting room's a bit... well... Dull? Exactly. I don't suppose you know anyone who could do it. Best thing you ever do is get rid of the post there. As it happens, I do. Myself and my colleagues would be more than happy to take on that task for you, Dr Merrick. We have considerable experience in the painting and decorating field. 
Your informants, Donna Rona. Yes, sir. I oh, can't say I blame him. Vic Hawking's not a man to cross. Certainly isn't. So, I'll organise my men. You make sure everyone's here. 5.30 sharp for a briefing, Sergeant. Yes, sir, will do. Decorate the surgery. I'm far too busy. Bernard, think of it as a service to the sick. I thought we were decorated. And if all goes well, she wants us to do the living room, put shelves up and that sort of thing. There could be a lot of work in it. I've got two cars booked in for servicing. And the butcher's got a problem with his big end. You... How are they, Mum? Service to run and buy paint and things. I can't take the day off. And as chief salesman, I've got to drum up trade. I'm busy. <laughs> what? David, I want you to do a good job. Not just a good job, the best. The whole future of our business, not to mention the community, the sick and the needy, are relying on you. So, uh, what would you be doing if you were in Manchester, then? In a club, most likely. Are you old enough to get into a club? Of course. How old do you think I am? Phil, Steve, can I have a word? Hi, Mike. How's the big bad world of CID? Fine, thanks, Gina. CID? The police? I'm surprised you let them in the pub, let alone speak to them. There must be something here, I know there must. Let's go from decorating the front room. That was years ago. David, things don't just disappear. Anyway, if nothing's too good for the sick, why don't we just go out and buy new brushes? Because wasting money, David, helps nobody. What's in this box? You see? I told you we had everything. Oh, well, I suppose a new brush is just about in order. But promise me you'll look after it better than that. Back and drop. Bellamy and Ventress will follow the bullion van and an unmarked car. The rest of us, with armed backup, will be positioned here. The car park at Howarth Point, where the ambush is due to take place. Right. Everyone clear? Any questions? Abelsfield Arms. Louise. Do you know what time it is? All right. OK, yeah, I'll let them know. I'll call you back later. It's Oh, hello, thanks. Are you Come on, you can do without them for one day. You two go ahead and pick up the van on the road. Nearly left you behind, Constable. Wouldn't want to miss a shout like this, would you? No, sorry, sir. Had to take a call. Anything serious? Aidan's Field Arms. There's a young girl staying there whose boyfriend just escaped from Borstal. Manchester thought he might be heading in this direction. Well, when did he go missing? Just after lights out, so ten maybe. Last night? We can manage with one less. Look, if he hitched or stole a car, he could be in Aidan's Field already. You stay behind him, follow up. She's not up yet, Steve. Well, can you get her up? What's the hurry? This Jamie character would be stupid to turn up here now, wouldn't he? Well, he can't be that bright. He got caught and put away, didn't he? Well, yeah. She's only just woken up, though. I don't want you questioning her in a nighty. Oh. So why don't you come back in half an hour or so? Yeah, all right. I'll get a description of him circulated, and then I'll be back to see what that little madam has to say about the little boy. Right? 
Where do you think the uh, name Bellamy comes from? I don't know. Yeah. Why, where do you think the name Ventress comes from? Oh, Ventress. <laughs> yeah, he was a venturer. Adventurer? <laughs> you have. You hardly strike me as a Christopher Columbus type, mate. <laughs> Looks like him. Yep, that's the number. Delta Alpha 26 to DI China. Suspect in view. Upstairs. Uh, wait a minute, Vernon. I'll get her if you tell me what is going on. Uh, we've been engaged to redecorate the waiting room. I needed to choose her colour scheme. That's it. I'm off. Now, don't forget, you've got to pick up Mrs Winstanley in ten minutes. So if you could get the doctor to make her colour choice and then tell David. Uh, David, you've got the note, haven't you? Mm, flat. Right. Well, don't forget to read it. David's doing it on his own. It's only a small paint job. Stay there and do nothing. there, the rest for us. I thought a nice warm apricot colour. Something welcoming and soothing but cheerful. Yes, but Liz, the thing is... Oh, would you get that for me, Jenny? It's bound to be a visit. Hello, Aidensfield. No, I'm sorry, but Dr. Merrick is for you. Hello. For the last time, James, the answer is no. Do you not understand that word or something? No, never. Now, please don't phone me again. Are you all right? I'm sorry, it's none of my business. No, it's not that. It's... You just can't believe I could actually leave. I don't know what to do to get the message across. Well, you sounded pretty clear to me just then. Well, let's hope so. If he rings again, tell him I've run off with the milkman. Or the fishmonger. Or the painter. Oh, speaking of which... You don't like the colour? No, 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 it's not that. It's just, uh, Van and Scripps. Well, he's not the most reliable bloke in the world. It's just a splash of paint, Jenny. What could go wrong? Think up your Mrs. Wynn Stanley. Do you know, I thought the doctor was going to make me late. She's so keen for us to get started on that waiting room. And then, of course, there's the rest of the surgery to be done. And she asked particularly for you, did she, Mr. Scripps? Well, she wouldn't want any other Tom, Dick or Harry, would she? Oh, no. A lady in her position needs to make sure she projects the right image. <laughs> and I'm sure you're just the man for the job. Do you know, it's amazing what a coat of paint can do for you. Do you really think so, Mr. Oh, Scripps? Oh, yes. It's a whole new start. A new, younger image. I 
I don't suppose you've got time to come in and look at my front lounge. Only the paper. My husband, you know, he put it up before he... Uh... Do you know, Mrs Winstanley, it just happens. I think I could just about squeeze you in. Oh, I'll go put the kettle on. <laughs> Oscar? Yeah? Have you seen Susie? Well, is she up in her room? Listen... Behind you. Yeah. <laughs> <You're all right. laughs> it took your time. Yeah, I've come from Manchester, haven't I? <laughs> Steve! Have you seen Susie? Police! Oh, run! Deliberately. You got him away deliberately. Thanks for warning him. I didn't know he was there. Oi! Where do you think you're going? Home. I'm not staying here. I ate it. Come on, Susie. Let's get you the doctor. It might be infected. Oh, great. So now I'm just going to get some awful country disease. Come on. Go easy. David, David, you can't put the chairs like that. Oh, well, I've only got the one sheet, so I'm going to have to put them all in the middle, otherwise they're going to get paint on them. But where will the patients sit? Could they stand? And what if paint drips on them? I'm sorry, David, but you can't do this during surgery hours. It'll have to wait until this evening. I'm staying with friends tonight, so you'll have the whole place to yourself. <laughs> what am I going to do now? Well, couldn't you rub down the woodwork? Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll... Dr. Mary, can you have a little look at my niece for me? She's had a fall on some rusty barbed wire. You better come this way. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was just. Uh... What is he doing? I don't know. <laughs> Well, it looks clean enough. Do you mind out just in case? An injection? Will it hurt? Well, just a little when I give it. You might be sore for a day or two. How did this happen? Well, that policeman, Steve, whatever his name is, he pushed me deliberately. He was chasing after my boyfriend. I'm sure it wasn't deliberate. So what's your young man's name then? Jamie. We're going to get married. Have you known him long? Well, when someone's right for you, you just know, don't you? Not necessarily. Don't rush into something you might regret. Why do people always insist on giving you advice, even when you don't want it? We've narrowed it down to cinnamon twirls, pink jacobean, knotted ivy and romantic roses, right? Oh, it's such a difficult choice, Mr Scripps. <laughs> Though I do like the idea of romantic roses. Roses, right. And very nice too. On the other hand, the pink 
Jacobean would go better with the furniture. Uh, Jacobean, right. Uh, wasn't I supposed to be taking you somewhere? Of course. Do you know I'd quite lost track of time? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you leave the key with me, I'll drop you off and I'll get my assistant round here straight away to get started. You're not doing the job yourself, Mr Scripps? Now, don't you worry, Mrs Stanley. Bernard is very reliable. When you come home this evening, you'll have a whole new look. What are they doing stopping here? They're supposed to be stopping at our car park. I'll go take a look. Radio Shiner. I don't know what they're watching, but it's going down here. Come on, quick. Delta Alpha 2-6 to DI Shiner. We've been had. You and Mike must go back and up your lads. Leave Hawking to me. Come on, come here, cuff him. Gonna move on. Listen quickly. And yourself. Right, now get round there. Help! Bring the car around! You right? No, I'm not all right. I've broken my ankle. We want to interview Hawking now, sir. First things first, Sergeant. Bradley? Yes, sir. I want to talk to that informant of yours. Right, sir. Let's find that bullion van. Can't have just disappeared. What is it? The car left at the scene, sir. Stolen last night from a caravan site near Whitby. Figures. Have you I... found that escaped prisoner yet? Just came back to run a check on him, Sergeant. And thought I'd do what I could just to help. Just stick to the job in hand, Constable. Excuse me. Looking for a Alf Ventress. Yeah, he's through there. Please take him home. Right. Ah, uh, Alf. How you doing? Oh, it's just a bad sprain. But I'd feel a lot better if you'd wheel me outside so I can have a fag. That battle axe won't let me have one. Well, I can do better than that. She says I can take you home. Oh, <laughs> brakes. There we go. It drives slowly. I'll have a lot of explaining to do once I get home. <laughs> to go round to Mrs. Winstanley's when you've finished, dear. Mrs. Winstanley? She needs her front room decorating. 
Vernon, it may have escaped your notice, but I run a garage. Bernard, I've got to get this business off the ground. And I promised her it would be done today. She's expecting you. Why me? Because she wants the best. And I'm busy. When did you make this arrangement? This morning, when I took her into town. She's left the keys here. If you made this arrangement this morning, how come you're only telling me now? Because you said you were busy today. She's not back until tonight, and how long does it take to put a bit of wallpaper up here? We're just doing a bit of hunting. In the car? Two men hanging around a car park with a shotgun. It's legit. Licensed. And the car wasn't hot, was it? You've both got records. Face it, Mr Shiner. You've got nothing on us. We have nothing to charge them with. That's also galling. Even the car wasn't stolen. Can you believe it? Not really, no. Almost like they knew they'd be picked up. Gives them a cast-iron alibi. Watched by half a North Riding CID. Good point. No look finding Harry, then? Not as yet, sir, no. Well, at least go and interview the van driver as soon as you can. He's fit now, according to the doctors. Let's see if we can get him to admit that it was paid to stop by hawking in the first place. That would at least give us conspiracy charges. But why would the driver admit to anything? It'll only incriminate him. Fear? If he's double-crossed hawking, he'd be terrified he's going to come after him. Right, Sarge. You see our problem, Mr. Hawking. We had information that you and Len Dowd would be in that car park, armed, and that you were going to carry out a gold bullion robbery there. But someone else did the robbery before the bullion van got to you. Who? Oh. Any idea? Hiya. Oh, you still here? She's still upstairs. Well, she was when I popped up a while back. Look, when I rang you to say what had happened, I sort of expected you to pick the lad up before he got here, not park yourself in my kitchen for the duration. <laughs> he wants to see Susie. I want to keep her safe. He's not an ardent criminal. He's just a kid who got caught with a knife. On more than one occasion. And he's been known to use it. What? I had no idea. When he escaped last night, he put one of the warders in hospital. Concussion. But Susie said he's... He's a dangerous criminal on the run, and he may well be armed. I'd be much happier keeping a watch outside, believe me, but... I'll make sure she stays in, after what you've just told me. Thanks. Can I come in? I want to see if you're all right. You're just as bad as all the others. Keeping me in and watching me every move. Look, if you meet up with Jamie and help him, you could end up in prison. Well, I am in prison, aren't I? Here you. says you're okay to talk? No, now. Give us a minute, will you? Okay. See you later. I think you're going to want to talk to me now. No. Later. That might be too late. How do you mean? We know Hawking paid you to stop the van. 
That's daft. I've been injured. But he paid you to stop the van in Howarth Point car park, not in a lay-by down the road. You don't know what you're talking about. Vic Hawking was waiting for you in the car park because that's where we arrested him. We were watching him when the ambush took place, so we know it wasn't him who did it. What? He's not a happy man, Howard. Not a happy man at all, and neither am I. Because we're gonna have to let him go. We don't have anything to charge him with. He's gonna come looking for you. We got a rush job on, thanks to Vernon. I've been stuck at the garage all day. What are you doing? I'm watching the ceiling. Why? Because it won't stay up. Where'd you get this? It's as old as the hills. Well, I will find that in the shed. Well, no wonder it's not sticking up. I've got some more outside. I'll get it for you. Oh, thank you. Hey, what, uh, what did you want me for? Not to worry. It looks like you got your hands full here. I'll manage. You've got to help me. Vic Hawking will kill me if he thinks I've double-crossed him. Well, someone must have offered you a lot of money to take a risk like that. No. You don't understand. I wasn't paid to change the rendezvous. I thought Hawking had changed it. What do you mean? Len Dowd came to see me. Len? Yeah. He said the plan had changed. So he was the one who arranged the change of locations? I wouldn't double-cross Vic Hawking. I wouldn't dare. You've got to help me. You've got to tell him it wasn't me. How's it going, David? Oh, darn fine. I'm just going to paint the walls. Good. I want you to do a good job for the doctor. I can't stop. I've got other appointments. Well, if they didn't have any apricot paint, so I've done what you're always telling me to do. I've used my edge. I was just about to start stripping. Oh. about the pink Jacobean. It would be well if you need more time. I can always come oh, back no, later. No, no, Just let me have a think. Perhaps you could hold it up for me. Oh, yes. That'll do nicely. <laughs> And suddenly I knew there was a miracle come true. Yesterday I was blue. Okay. You alright? Yeah. Anyone see you? Oh. Right, come on, let's go. In the pale moonlight, I kissed and held her tight. It's not easy to shift that much gold. It'll have to be melted down. Len must be banking on us, not letting Hawking go before the gold's moved on. 
Could have been planning to use the same smelters, hoping it already set up. Makes sense. But we've still got to get the gunmen. Well, if we let Len and Hawking go, they should lead us straight to the gold and the third man. Len will be on the lookout, expecting Hawking to follow him. Not if we tell Len we're going to detain Hawking on a holding charge. That's a risk. Is it one worth taking? Let's charge and release Len tomorrow. Me and my lads will stick with him. Then when he's safely out of the way, we release Hawking and follow him. Two chances of following them to the gold. That's got to be enough. Cold night. I don't think she was equipped for a night in the open. We can be pretty sure she wasn't alone. We'll probably find him tucked up in a B&B. Oh, I hope so. She's just a kid. What? Yeah, I might be a kid, sure. Still. Mrs. Winstanley's a satisfied customer, Bernard? Not as satisfied as she'd have liked. I want a word with you. <laughs> Where's it going? We've been around here once already. go. I'll have to wait till the DI gets back. I can't pull Phil or Steve off the search when the girl gets injured. We'll have no one to man the station. Well, it might be too late by then. I could follow him up on my own. We need two people for this. You know that, Mike. A little bird told me you could be in need of some help. Oh, boy, are we glad to see you, Alf. Right. Let's bail Hawking. Oh, it could be that I wanted to get away from Mrs. Ventress. <laughs> Here. Oh, is there anything else I can do to help? Uh, well, uh, a cup of tea will go on this. Before you lot disappear and leave me to it. <laughs> Steve! Steve! Steve, we've been here. Spent the night in the barn. Farmer heard them this morning having a right old row. Where'd they go? Follow me. As I walk this land with the golden tears, I have visions of a many things. But happiness is still slowly losing. Feel the sadness and confusion. Hello again. Where's lover boy? I don't know and I don't care. He's nothing to me. Yeah, this is them now. Well, doesn't look like he's planning to take any prisoners when he confronts Lane. No, he's a prisoner. Don't want to spook them just yet. You're warm enough now. So he's heading down to Whitby, you reckon? He said we could hitch a ride to the continent in a smelly fishing boat. I'll take the bike. You get Susie back and I'll see you down in Whitby. Right. Let's get you back to Gina. Suppose she's cross. Well, you caused her a lot of worry putting yourself at risk like that. I didn't think... No. I never did at your age either. But you want to try thinking sometimes before you do things. Save a lot of apologising later. It just seems so romantic, running away with a wanted man. You've got to admit, it's really good looking. 
He's not my type. Oh, he looked great, but he really wasn't that bright, you know. Well, I said we should head for London, but he wanted to go to Marrakesh. He didn't even have a passport. Never been abroad before, you see. Unlike you, of course. I've been to Mallorca. A man of your age should be flattered by such attention of a lady. You're flattened, more like. Bernard, you're letting the side down. Well, you have to go round and finish the job. Over my dead body, Vernon, she nearly had me for breakfast. Hello, oh, Mr. Yes. Scrapes. Ah, oh, Mr. Scrapes. I thought it was your car outside. Only I wanted to clear up last night's little misunderstanding. Oh, I'm sure that won't be necessary. Oh, I know you'll understand. It just transpired that Bernard wasn't quite um, up to the job. I see. But he did assure me that you would be more than willing to finish what he started. Ten o'clock tomorrow morning. I do hope that's convenient. Perfect timing. You've caused us all a great deal of worry. Do you know that? We've got enough problems as it is without you adding to them. Yeah, that'll warm you up. Thanks. And I am sorry, and Gina. Just as long as you're all right. Do you want a cup, Oscar? No, oh, thanks, Gina. Let's be getting on. Make sure everything's straight before I leave. You think you'd be more excited about going to Spain, wouldn't you? <laughs> going abroad isn't always fun, you know. No. I can't believe I was really thinking of going away with Jamie. I mean, you're just so stupid. Well, we all make mistakes, especially where men are concerned. All of us. Mind you, that Phil Bellamy. Well, he's all right, though, isn't he? Quite sweet, in fact. For a policeman. done for you. What? Made us do all the work, you mean? Take all the risk? You were well paid. That's Harry. I don't believe it. Your informant? Yeah. A bit late in the day for the likes of you to turn to armed robbery, are you? Retiring. One last job. Well, you've got your wish. This is going to be your last job. Both of you. Come on, Vic. Police! Stop your guns now! <laughs> Time I've got all three and something to charge them with. Come on, David, get the door open. Oh, I'll wait till she gets here. But it's freezing. Oh, is she? Right. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad you're back. David's just about to show us his handiwork. 
The grand unveiling of my new waiting room. I've been looking forward to this. Good. I'll get the wretched door open. I hope you've done a good job, David. The whole future of our business relies on this. Oh, no, don't worry, I have done. Right. I can't wait to show you. Go on. Go on, everybody in. Well, what do you reckon? Green. A particularly bilious shade of green. Yeah, well, they didn't have any apricots, so I've used green gauge. <laughs> well, it's almost the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, well, there's something else. <laughs> it's like you said, Mr Vernon. All I was asked, and a little bit more. 